so I guess it's time to announce the best reads of 2023. Like the worst reads of 2023, I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way to the very best. Number five. We Traveled the Spaceways by Victor Labbe. This is my only novella on the best of series and it's here because for me it surprised and delighted. The general premise of it was that there was a homeless black man who was setting churches on fire because a collection of voices that he anthropomorphized as empty soda bottles told him to. And if you're anything like me, that first few page setup just made you incredibly nervous for where this book could be going. Obviously I loved the ride because here it is finding a slot on the best reads of the year. There's not a lot I can say about the story right now, partially because it's in a novella and and partially because I think We Traveled the Spaceways is best read when you go in completely blind. I think discussing We Travel the Spaceways with other people can be a fun little personality test to see what they think happened in the story and how they interpreted the events as presented. I was left feeling hopeful and triumphant at the end, but of course I kind of do agree with some of the larger points that were being provided in the narrative. I don't really know how sharp or incisive the commentary was because within my own little bubble a lot of the things that were presented is stuff that I feel is very common knowledge but it was still just really nice to see it in literature. And it made me feel like Victor LaVey is definitely an author for me to look for in the future. His new release this year, Lone Woman, is definitely higher on my TBR for this experience. Moving into number four. Demonic by Jeff Strand. This was my first novel by this author, although he's been recommended to me before. From this experience, I have two or three more on my TBR just waiting for me to get to them. The way he handles fast-paced horror and gore with just a dash of comedy is a perfect little blend. I thought he did the character work really well, the pacing on this novel is just right. Even though the story itself is just a little bit of popcorn fluff, all of it is done to its fullest. So I was still thinking about it and remembering bring it days later. Even now, I could give you like a beat for beat little plot point summary and tell you about the character arcs and some of the thematic moments, and I read it like six months ago. So that's a lot longer than some of these other fluffy stories stick around in my head. And this was the book that concluded my attempt to find a horror story that involved cult. Up note, this demonic story, the cult does involve a supernatural, literally of the devil element, and incorporates it really well, where the depravity and the cruelty was still humans and wholly in the mortal normal range but like what enabled them to go above and beyond and just keep going to further extremes was a little bit of magic demon energy in there. Only one that I would recommend if you're looking for some fast-paced horror with a dash of comedy. Moving into number three. Hellbent by Leigh Bardugo. So I wasn't even 100% confident about purchasing Hellbent. I'd read Ninth House on Kindle Unlimited and done some work with it in the past. I was mildly curious to see where the story would go from there, but like not so curious that I thought it was necessarily worth purchasing it. And in the end, I did buy it mostly so I could do a review here on <laughs> Booktube. I think I might have left it with a three-star review, which feels right. But this book made it onto the list and etched into my heart because of the scene where all the characters were descending into hell and we were experiencing the first time each one of these characters had committed murder. Very intense, interesting stuff that we got from each individual character's point of view. There's nothing else in the story that lives up to it. I don't think I've read anything else though that was quite as intense going back to back through each of those person's worst points in their life. It's kind of funny that in a urban fantasy, supernatural noir horror, what I like is the most mundane element. Excluding Alex Stern's murder, none of the other characters killed people through supernatural means. Seeing each of these characters at their lowest moment really spoke to me and said something I think meaningful about the range of humanity in each individual person and speaks towards my desire to embrace and forgive and find justice in ways that aren't punitive but can be redemptive or can ignore 
acknowledge that there's more to you than your worst moment. I don't know, the scene just had such a heavy impact. It stuck with me the whole year. I'm still thinking about it as one of the most epic things that I've read. Even though it's only that one thing in the whole book that I just felt like Hellbent had earned its spot here, even if the rest of it was kind of shoulder shruggy. And the runner-up for Best Read of the Year, A Song for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. Full transparency, I think this book is great, but I really, I believe some of my love for it comes from me discovering solar punk as a genre more than this book itself. And shout out both to Andrewism and Pop Culture Detective for sort of highlighting the solar punk genre in this book along with a couple other things when discussing it. For those who don't know what solar punk is, the way I like to think about it is as a contrast to cyberpunk. So cyberpunk is like that Blade Runner humanity is running to its own end, its own doom. We made the wrong choice and we're in the downward dystopian apocalyptic slide. Well in solar punk scenarios we're still running to that end, we're still hitting a critical mass decision point, but we came together and we made the right choices and we recalibrated and found balance with ourselves and the world around us. Like that feel-good feeling of making the right decision, of choosing yes and taking care of myself and other people, caring for the earth and everyone around me and making a brighter future for everyone, like all that really speaks to me. So as a genre it's already very heartening and warm and embracing. And you might think if we figure out a way to be in balance with nature, if there's no evil company, if people are fed and clothed and taken care of, then what kind of story can you even really tell in this genre? Which is where Song for the Wild Built comes in because it gives you this inviting, engaging story about a character who is doing what they want to do, who's continually reaffirmed who has a loving family and is still seeking purpose or meaning just like a little bit beyond that. Every time they like go out and do something it's not quite enough. So this finally brings them to the desire to hear crickets for themselves and they're gonna leave the boundaries of humanity as they know and go out into the wild and when that happens they stumble across this robot moss cat and this human being and moss cat become the first human robot meeting within in hundreds of years. And all the negotiations, the learning about each other and their culture and their point of view, the conversation, the discussion, the problems that arise on their journey to hear crickets, and then what happens when they reach the cricket sound is all just really engaging interesting stuff. It gives us a really great character study, it gives us a chance to like understand different cultures and perspectives, it gives us this opportunity to better understand ourselves and our human nature and how inherently if humanity exists there is going to be some kind of interesting conflict or drama to go with us. Uh, we don't need to create something big and massive to have an engaging story. I could go on for a while but I have talked about a song for the Wild Bill and Mosscap specifically in quite a few videos this year. Everyone should at least try this or something like it once just to get a different point of view or a different way to look at things. And the number one story I read this year, Riot Baby. By Toshi Abuchi. So this book isn't what I was expecting and I loved it even more because it did break the bounds. It's striking and intense and a heavily demanding read. It's so well written and poignant and something that I really think almost everyone should read at least once. Because it is a challenging read, it's something that I would look up trigger warnings for and I'd make sure I was in the right mental state before picking up. But it's so good and so relevant and uh, something you could really sink your teeth into with a lot of di different thematic elements. Uh, I just can't imagine someone not enjoying it. So Riot Baby, like both Hellbent and Song for the Wild Bill, speak to my empathy, my desire to see humanity fed and housed and clothed and taken care of. And specifically in Riot Baby, it speaks to my desire for redemptive justice versus punitive justice because a massive amount of this story is about facing the American prison industrial complex and what the reality is on the ground and then it is imagined a little further into a science fiction component that's not quite there yet. 
but it's maybe like half a step away from where we are right now. So while Psalm for the Wild built as aspirational, maybe what we could be quite a ways out, Riot Baby is urgent and gripping and darkly real. In a lot of ways, the story was a little bit hard for me to read. It even hurts in some points for me to keep going, but only because it does hold up a mirror so accurately to the world around us. And it's depicting some things that I really just wish weren't the case. I've got a full in-depth review for Riot Baby already on the channel, so I won't go too far into the details. This is a story where I feel like you could read the summary and still not be 100% certain what you're getting into. And that, to me, is part of what's good about it, is you just go in there and agree to go with the characters and see where the story takes you. And those are going to be the top five reads. What was your favorite thing of 2023? Tell me in those comments down below. And if you got this far, feel free to leave a stack of books emoji. And as always, keep reading. Bye!